Good afternoon, mga ka-HR. It's a wonderful afternoon ngayon dahil pinagpala tayo dahil medyo mako, hindi siya makulimlim. Maaraw ngayon dito sa ating kinaroroonan. How about you, Ma'am Jorina? Medyo maaraw ba dyan? Yes, maaraw dito. Baka parating pa lang ang sinasabi mong kulimlim. So, good afternoon, mga ka-HR. Good afternoon. Ma'am Jorina, ito pang ilang Saturday na ba natin ng back-to-back? -back? Parang three... Ani? Pang five na. Pang, pang five pang na. Lima. At talagang sinulit natin ang ating second HRE knowledge anniversary dahil talaga natin ginawang back na back na back na back na back talaga siya. Kasi August and September, then bawat HRE knowledge laging dalawang speaker at talagang maraming natututunan ang ating mga ka-HR. Makikita naman natin yon sa lahat ng kanilang mga uh, comments, suggestion, and talaga namang dumadagdag ang ating mga kasama sa ating HR Calabarzon Group. Kaya mga ka-HR, di po ba Ma'am Jorina, mapapanood na nila ang ating mga HRE knowledge sa YouTube account po ng HR Calabarzon. Siyempre, dahil po yan sa napakagaling at napakatalented nating co-founder Miss Jorina Caparal. O di ba Ma'am Jorins, pwede na nilang mapanood. Ilan na nga po ba ang nakapost natin Ma'am? Nasa 32 videos ng HRE Knowledge yung naka-upload at pwede niyong panoorin yon at your own time. Yes. O para hindi na sila mainip, syempre nandiyan na rin ang ating speaker. I'll share my screen. Okay. What, ano nga ba ang HR Calabarzon? Ang HR Calabarzon is a registered non-profit organization which provide virtual and face-to-face -face learning sa lahat ng ating HR practitioner and enthusiasts in Calabarzon, Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Rizal, and Quezon. And, syempre po, general reminders, uh, open po ang ating Zoom room as early as 15 minutes before 12.45. Pero inihingi po namin ang kooperasyon ng lahat na kung kaya, video on, audio mute, para po mas maintindihan at mas ma-maximize natin ang learning this afternoon with our speaker mentor. Ang lahat po ng katanungan ay pakilagay po sa chat box natin, dito po sa Zoom, or sa Facebook comment, sa Facebook Live. Yes, live po tayo, pero mga ka- HR natin sa Facebook Live, pwede pa po kayong pumasok sa Zoom para mas maganda po ang interaction with our speaker this afternoon. We are requesting your full attention and cooperation po para ma-maximize natin ang pre-learning na ibibigay ng ating speaker and mentor. We also provide e-certificate kahit libre po ang ating learning, nagpo-provide po tayo ng e-certificate as long as uh, magbabigay po kayo ng minimal fee of 100 pesos. This payment is good for two webinar. Ma'am Jorina? And of course, for our HRE knowledge, frequently asked questions, ano nga ba ang HRE knowledge? Ito ay isang webinar ginawa para sa sole purpose of learning for HR practitioners and enthusiasts like, do you require payment to attend? No, we do not require your payment to attend for your attendance, but we require a minimal payment of 100 pesos to issue an e-certificate signed by us. Now, where can I find replays? You may find replays through our Facebook page and occasionally on our YouTube account, which we already have 32 videos up and running. Please do Now, of course. Yes, ma'am. Now, of course, for our participants who will get our e-certificates, please do ensure that our Google form that we will be sending through your the Zoom chat box and the Facebook live post is complete and accurately filled up with the following important information. First of all, your full name, first name, middle initial, and then your last name. Make sure to double check it so that it is correct. And of course, our email address to make make sure to always double check because sometimes nag bounce back yung email and hindi nare-receive ni participant 
ang kanyang e-certificate. And of course, reference number and proof of payment. The proof of payment must be the actual payment, the GCash payment. Uh, if there are different Okay, so why do we have to pay for the minimal fee of 100 pesos? Diba? So, bakit nga ba? The minimal fee is to sustain our expenses for our monthly subscription for the Zoom postpaid account. Used to provide free HR e-knowledge webinars every week para sa ating mga ka-HR. And of course, para sa ating GCash payment, paki-screenshot na lamang po ito para sa ating QR code and ang number natin ay 0919-009-6339. Occasionally, we will message the the GCash payment throughout the session. And, and of, of course, HR Calabarzon would like to thank our following sponsor. Siyempre, tutulungan ako ni Ma'am Jorina para magpaliwanag o magpasalamat sa ating sp sponsor occasionally. Of course, we would like to thank Wellness Health and Total Insurance, Total Reward, Insurance Consultant. They provide HMO Medical Insurance, Group Life Insurance, Personal Accident Insurance, Executive Checkup, Retirement Plan, Clinic Management, Burial Services, and Non-Life Insurance. Ito po ang kanilang mga HMO Partners. Kaya marami silang partner ng HMO, mas maganda po isang 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 entity na lang po yung kakausapin natin, marami po silang makakausap. And this is also their life insurance partner, ang kanilang mga partner para po sa ating life insurance, para sa ating mga employee or even our personal. Kanilang non-life insurance, eto rin po, pa-screenshot na lang po. And if ever po, we would like to request for quotation uh, product presentation and inquiries, you may contact our employee benefit consultant at EB at Wellness Health tot and Total Rewards .com. or you may call Mr. Ron Benedict Dante at 0919-009-0236, Mr. Dion Jeffrey Flores at 0968-853-5003, or Mr. Raymond Astria at 0917-173. 0111. And of course, PC Works Infinite Possibilities. The, the contact details are as listed below. If you would get want to get your computer equipment or any software, you may go to PC Works. Also, we would like to thank CPHR. Everyone, na, member po ng HR Calabarzon or hindi pa po member ng HR Calabarzon, please do pay uh, like our page ay HR Calabarzon Group Inc. or our YouTube. Mag-subscribe po kayo or you could um, possibly join our HR Calabarzon Group. Please do uh, um, message us kung hindi po kayo maka-join dahil lahat po ng member ng HR Calabarzon with get 10% industry partner para po maging isang certified practitioner in human resources. And of course, MGLF Optical Clinic. If kailangan na magpa-check ng mata, punta na sa MGLF Optical Clinic. Ito ang kanilang mga numero para sa mga interesadong kumuha ng sala. Also, we would like to thank Caparal Appliances and Furniture. We make your home complete. So chat them now. Meron po silang Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, at saka uh, ayun, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. At nakikita na rin po sila sa Viber. So please do screenshot their cell phone number 0995-095-7540 or 0995-627. 1086. Marami po silang branch dito po within Cavite, Salitran, Katiwa, Paliparan, Imus, Langkaan, General Villas, Silang, and Alfonso. And of course, Butterfly Events Incorporated. Get your girls ready for unlimited makeup. Overs, hair and makeup, nail art, and face painting. Get your kids ready to be 
the princess that they want to be. Of course, ito po ang kanilang Facebook page. Please do follow them and like their page. These are their contact numbers and their email address for inquiries. Of course, we will also would like to thank Jurinas Home Depot. Simply the best for less. They have a lots of product and services. They do furniture, appliances, upholstery services, customized furniture design in a very easy installment plan. Please do contact them at 0942 471 8720. And of course, our one of our newest sponsors, New World Diagnostics. They provide medical and annual physical exam requirements. You may go ahead and screenshot to get the contact Lordes King with the number 0917-895-2572. And, syempre, ito yung pinaka-enjoyable at nakaka-excited na part, Ma'am Jorina, isa sa part na nai-excite na, na ako, na announce sa ating mga ka-HR na since nagpo-provide na tayo ng HR Business Partner Learning Series, we also communicated and coordinated and partner with Asia HRM para sa Champion Online Certification Program, Human Resource Business Partnering. Ayan, ka-member po natin tayo nila at we did they provide 10 10% I think ah, $50 discount para po sa lahat ng mag enroll at maging isang certified human resource business partner internationally accredited. And take note guys, wala pong renew to. Lifetime na po kayong certified human resource business partner na accredited po internationally. Ang kanilang learning objectives ay syempre una to boost your business acumen learn essential skills, become a data-driven partner, and employee experience. Ang kanina pong module, para po makita natin, meron tayong module 1 to 6, and they have business o bonus uh, session na talaga naman pong magkakaroon tayo ng pagkakataon na makita at makilala ang ating mga ka-HR business partner. Muli po ang ating future, um, ating future for the certificate program ay convenient, flexible, and affordable for only $297. Tapos may discount pa tayo if you do sign up before September 30. Yung $297 po natin, magiging $247. Roughly parang $16,000 po siya in the Philippine money. Pero guys, yung certification and yung license po natin is good for lifetime. Hindi na po siya nire-renew. At syempre, since tayo ay isa sa magiging uh, HR, certified HR business partner, lahat po ng learning or mga session na ilalabas ng Asia HRM ay kasali tayo for free. Ayan. Kaya po, screenshot nyo lang po yung course structure. Please do message us if ever meron kayong concern. Ayan, ma'am, ito na yung highlights sa ating afternoon. Second HR E-Knowledge Anniversary Edition Back-to-Back -back Learning Series. This afternoon, ang una nating makakasama ay ang isa sa idolo ko, isa sa Board of Directors ng Philippine HR Group, at isa sa napaka talagang masasabi kong napaka down to earth, Ma'am Durina. Kasama ko talaga rin siya sa, ano, sa Singapore at talagang yung pagkakilala ko sa kanya noon, way back 2017, He's still the same. Na lagi, di ba, buong, buong pandemic, no, Ma'am Zorina, pang, pang two years na natin siya nakakasama ngayon. Napaka-down to, to earth nito si Sir Marvin at talagang enjoy na enjoy kami. Marami kami natututunan sa kanya. Even talagang isa siya sa pinagpipitagan ng Philippine HR Group na speaker mentor. So, Ma'am Zorina, can you please do the honor? Of course. Now, Mr. Marvin Zoilo is a recipient of the 2019 Asia's Most Talented HR Leaders Award from World HR Congress in Singapore and the 2020 Top 500 Global HR Leaders in Mumbai, India. 
He is a certified human resources professional by IFPM, a certified management consultant, a founder of ASEAN HR Leaders Circle Philippines, an officer of the Lean Management Alliance of the Philippines, and the former director of Development for Philippines HR Group. Now, his 20 years of experience in organization development and executive management has stemmed from his extensive leadership roles with several multinational companies. As an agile HR, it is his advocacy to elevate the HR profession as an HR business partner and a key role in the organization by introducing more critical soft skills to fellow HR practitioners, which focuses on cross-function development, strategic leadership alignment, business acumen, strategy correlations, workforce data analysis, analysis competency optimization planning, and risk-based approach in HR projects. Introducing the HR 4.0 specialist, Mr. Marvin Zoilo. Give yourself, give Mr. Marvin Zoila a round of applause, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me. I give you give a thumbs up on the chat if you can hear. <laughs> I'm using two uh, devices, uh, so I'll be sharing my screen uh, on my laptop and also the uh, the sound. So if you can allow me to share my screen, thank you. Hey Marvin, yung isang account mo Marvin HR. I you can you hear me? Is yes. There, uh, an echo? Let me know. Okay naman po, okay naman. Okay, I might not be able to see you guys because I'm going to uh, share my whole screen, but I'll monitor using my phone. So let me know if you can't hear me. Just uh, give a sign. <laughs> But again, uh, thank you so much for HR Calabarzon for inviting me and of course Ned and Jarina, whom I have uh, met in Singapore recently. And uh, thank you so much for also um, meeting all of our friends from the uh, Philippine HR group and uh, we miss everybody there. So um, I, I hope um, you have enjoyed yourself uh, going through the, the training that uh, we were able to attend. So. Um, Today, um, I'd like to, of course, uh, share with you what's happening in the ASEAN region. Uh, as you know, I'm also the founder and uh, uh, Philippine chapter uh, uh, director for the ASEAN HR Leader Circle Philippines. And uh, recently, uh, there had been a, a new connection with uh, other countries from Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Thailand, as well as in, uh, of course, here in the Philippines and in Singapore. So what I'll be sharing with you is something that has been revived because of the pandemic. And of course, a lot of things that is happening uh, because of the, um, you know, the changes of the new normal that we're going to expect. So, so basically what we wanted to uh, impart in, in today's um, topics definitely is revolving around my expertise in HR training, organization development, um, safety and finance spaces. You know, we've talked about the workplace environment in the last many couple of years. Uh, those who have attended some of my webinars as well, um, I hope you had uh, some ideas on how to improve your workplace, especially being ready for uh, the, the advent of uh, artificial intelligence. So basically, when we talk about, you know, the ASEAN region in comparison to globalization, uh, you know, the Philippines had been so much ready for any of the changes that's been happening, uh, especially because of the, uh, the introduction of BPOs here in the Philippines. And of course, a lot of the multinationals who have been uh, pretty much uh, invested in the Philippine uh, economy. So um, they have given a lot of chances for Filipinos to um, stay here in the Philippines, live with their families, and still get a, a very good paying job and a career that they are definitely uh, considered to be globally um, at par. And uh, at the same time, um, their careers are really, you know, hitting it uh, in terms of the, the 
standards that is acceptable throughout the different regions. So if you if you in think about it, um, the occupations in Asia, uh, including the Philippines, way back in the 1990s, those who have not even been uh, born yet, but you have family members who are in the U.S., in Europe, or maybe even in Australia and Japan, where in they're working as uh, medical uh, professionals, as well as in sales, and even engineers, architects, designers. But recently, um, Asia had been a really good uh, melting pot and a source of uh, resource in terms of you know workers from the IT software, uh, anything that ha has to do with even uh, data analytics, uh, cloud computing, uh, development of new technology uh, that's acceptable worldwide or is being used worldwide. If you if you remember just recently, cryptocurrency is one of them, and blockchain technology has been in the conversation in the last at least five, six years since the mention of the 2015 um, ASEAN integration uh, for all of the 11 members of the ASEAN uh, membership. Um, so, so basically the demand for, for the workers, uh, if you notice example would be for IT, uh, a lot of those are coming from uh, Vietnam at least in the last 10 years. You know, a lot of the uh, employees that are being, you know, outsourced uh, for IT services include Vietnam, not only because of their fast internet, but also their, the focus of the, uh, of the government uh, is really towards, you know, uh, the, the STEM system, the science, technology. Of course, you have your math as well. So, um, those are the things that we need to look at from a, from an HR perspective here in the Philippines is that what's what's going to be the next trend as we go along uh, starting in the future. So if you notice, just because there was a um, just because there was a pandemic, you know, because of COVID uh, starting in 2020, it does not mean that um, things have slowed down or things have definitely come to a back burner, but actually it has propelled even forward what needs to be done. And if you notice a lot of our offices, whether it's going to be a small, medium or large scale businesses and even multinational companies, um, you know, they, they started to immediately adapt to the changes brought by um, in a pandemic and suddenly, you know, laptops are being purchased, uh, devices are now equipped with, you know, online services and e even the, the way businesses are now doing their, their business model is pretty much revolving around, you know, online services and making it easier, convenient for the customers. So maybe you've heard about customer experience and user experience, uh, definitely this um, area of the business uh, became a forefront and a frontline uh, defense because of the COVID uh, pandemic that we have experienced globally. So basically everything had been propelled forward because of the work that has been done in 2020. So the, the role of artificial intelligence, the role of technology has definitely, you know, took over of how we do things, how we now look at the human resources field and as well as other areas of the business that we are, you know, part of. So robotics has been there in the past. Uh, Parang nawala o ako ang nawala. Play, um, you know, control your business from afar. 
So definitely that's not something that HR should should be far behind, right? I'm sure you can, you know, put a, a thumbs up in our chat group. Those who agree that HR should also be knowledgeable in the artificial intelligence and the technology, wouldn't you agree? Right? So it means that, you know, just because we are working with people, it does not mean that the way we should do our jobs as HR should be limited, you know, by doing paperwork. Actually, now more than ever since about 2014, when the Tokyo Protocol by United Nations to start in the ASEAN region to implement, you know, paperless um, initiatives in, in the country. So, just example in the Philippines in 2014, although it's been it's a little late, but we still uh, agreed, you know, in the United Nations treaty that you know the Philippines should follow. Uh, with the use of um, the less use of plastic or to, to, to really uh, not use plastic at all. So the, including Makati where I live and, and many cities in the Philippines are, have definitely abolished using you know, uh, plastic cups, uh, plastic paper bags uh, that are not recyclable uh, and, and even straws have been banned from uh, a lot of the food um, establishments right so if you think about it hr has been using ai and machine learning and a lot of different um different types of uh services that is pretty much technology driven right so example if you're now using you know a lot of the different use uh different uh, platforms online which is cloud-based hris maybe even an hrms right, uh, a combination of uh, maybe even customer relations management, database management, your 201 file, all of this are actually online and it's available on a platform. Even, you know, personality development uh, courses that you have for your e-learning to involve your employees to, to be upskilled, you know. And this has been a talk, you know, uh, we're actually now on the fifth industrial revolution. The last time I've been invited by Neddy and the group for HR Colors on, we talked about the fourth industrial revolution, right? Where and people had been really uh, afraid of losing their jobs, right? So um, definitely uh, in the Philippines, there will be a lot of jobs that are going to be lost in the same region as well. And if not lost, they can they can be disrupted. But it does not mean that the jobs of HR will be abolished and it will be decimated. Actually, it's more enriched. The HR job is now more than ever important. And definitely, you know, you have now a chance to, you know, to uh, to professionalize basically the, the HR job. So there will be actually almost more jobs that's going to be available because, available because of the, the technology that's now uh, you know, being presented to us. So just imagine you know, a lot of the repetitive jobs, the manual labor, the things that is easily outsourced can be done by technology. So example, I'm not sure if you've heard, maybe Deloitte, uh, IBM, uh, even some other big multinational companies, part of the you know top 500, absolutely has used AI in interviews. You know when they're sourcing employees. You know you have now LinkedIn, you have Indeed, you have Job Street, you have so many other platforms where in you know you can do your job posting, and the companies can use you know other types of. Uh, um, systems in place for them to have their their candidates being processed and even their exams being processed. So you have now Taleo, you have uh, Harvard, you have so many other types of online uh, and, and even cloud-based technologies available for HR. And this is to give more time away from the repetitive job and the menial job and those manual labor that's needed. So just example, maybe 20, 20, 30 years ago, your 201 file encoded by your HR representative or your HR associate or HR um, apprentice, 
or an OJT, right? So it means that additional people will now be required to, you know, input it, you know, but because of the, the changes happening in the technology, actually the candidate will now have a more seamless um, experience uh, with, your, with your recruitment uh, process. It's, they don't need to wait, you know, five hours. I'm sure anybody can raise their hands in, in our chat box. If you have experience waiting for your interview in a lobby somewhere in where you're trying to apply for four hours or three hours, just imagine the waste of time that you have just because somebody's busy. But now because of the, because of the, the scheduling that you can do online, right? You can move your, your Zoom platform, your Google Meets, you have your uh, Hangouts, you have, you know, even Messenger now has that. Um, you know, all of this platform can be, can be used for those repetitive manual labor and, you know, easily outsourced jobs, right? And we have to now focus on what, what the Industrial Revolution uh, which previously in the fourth industrial revolution has already been introduced, such as you know, a lot of the a lot of the companies have now moved their services online, such as example supply chain, right? So your your purchase orders, um, your EDI electronic data interface, you know, computer to computer uh, conversations can now happen. There's there's no need for a person to be there only for a person to program it, to check the reports, you know, uh, on a certain day, uh, there's a schedule, things like that. But, you know, you don't need a whole battalion of people to, to look into this because you can actually use artificial intelligence and AI. So what does it say? It means that HR should focus on soft skills. This is now the time wherein we bring our soft skills forward. What does that mean? So imagine, you know, we don't know exactly what the future of jobs going to be, the, but the fifth industrial revolution mentions that, you know, everything is making sure that there's a human and humanoid or robot interaction that will bring the game forward, right? So the, the, the robots are not going to replace us. Actually, we're just given more time to focus on where to put our efforts. So before, a lot of HR people are, are complaining, you know, we don't have enough time because there's a lot of transactions that I need to do. You know, just the report alone, I can't do it, you know, for, for a few minutes or a click of a button. Although you ha do have Excel file, but you know, you have to be really savvy in Excel right for you to be able to do use, to use your macro use your you know be look up formatting is so difficult a lot of hr not built for it whether we want to admit it or not but yes but the fifth industrial revolution mentions how easy you know for hr to adapt to the next things. So just imagine the, re the only reason why in the ASEAN region it's difficult for us to accept What's happening is that, you know, just recent um, OECD uh, survey before the pandemic says that, you know, 32% of the jobs that we have right now in the ASEAN region is definitely reshaped, but we are not ready. Why? Because six out of the 10 workers that we have is not computer savvy. So imagine just here in the Philippines, now the kids, you know, I have nephews, and uh, I have nieces, and um, they are now really focusing on, you know, advanced teaching. Which way back when I was still a kid, uh, you know, this are I'm used to just typewriter, but now they're using the computer. They're really advanced. They can even do things using Minecraft, right? At the age of five or six years old. So basically, what what the Asian region is trying to focus on is really leverage on the disruptors. We need to embrace what these disruptions mean to us. So way back in, in, in maybe seven years ago, when the first talk about how disruptions are being made, uh, I used to work for AutoHub, very proud of it. 
um, they were the first companies here in the Philippines to bring the 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 vehicle uh, hailing device that which we use now for many many years, and I'm so proud of those group. But if you think about it, this is way back in 2013, 2012, right? We're in those who are those who are in their peak of their of their youth can remember that traffic jams were caused mostly because there are very very few taxis, and taxis are you know difficult. To, to hail, uh, buses are always full, you know, jeepneys are also not available on certain areas and at time of the day or time of the evening. But when we have now those applications wherein you can use a car, somebody's car, somebody's motorcycle, and you can just hail them and, you know, pay them if they're going somewhere, right? This actually disrupted the transportation system not just in the philippines but across the world right suddenly private vehicles became a an exponential um tool for transportation now to revisit itself so that's what a lot of companies are now leveraging they leverage technology so whether you're 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 selling goods whether you're selling services or whether you are maybe just uh, you know renting out your place, if you remember again, 12 years ago, the application for rentals like Airbnb and etc. disrupted the hotel and tourism industry, right? Because there was a, a, a natural linear movement of of growth in those industries that had been there for many many years. So just imagine this is happening now to HR. What are the things you think has disrupted HR? You can put it here on the on the chat group, on the chat box. You know, think about you know what are what are the things that technology has brought in to disrupt HR practice. I'm sure you have a lot of things to think about. So if you if you look at it, the industrial revolution, the evolution of the IRs way back when there was the steam engines and the factories were first introduced in Europe in the, you know, before the time of Rizal in the 19th century and 18th century, where of course your stories uh, of the second industrial revolution in the 1870s were in electricity, combustion engine, you know, oil uh, refineries, steel um, factories and basically a lot of science and technology is happening in in that era and and definitely you, you might think of Les Miserables <laughs> the musical yeah that's where you know that that particular part of the history is anyway the third digit uh, the third industrial revolution is about digitization of course you know the first computers were already introduced way back in the 1950s 1960s we're in, but there's very, very few companies, only IBM and, and such have those. But when it really uh, boomed in the 1980s, we're in, it's now for every single person, right? You have your own TV sets in at home. You can own a, an Apple Macintosh in the 1980s. You have your Microsoft and, and, and um, uh, different computers that you can own at home. You can have a printer no matter how Jurassic it is, and the dial-up as well, and a cell phone at the time. So that's the digital revolution that a lot of people are now really is ignoring and taking for granted. But, you know, at the time, it was really revolutionary because, you know, you don't need to send a letter through the post mail and get it after six months. You literally, you can call somebody and have that connection. And the 21st century, this now your... AI, big data, your robotics, your IoT, your blockchain, your crypto. So this after the, 20, the, the year 20, uh, 2010, right? Or before 2010 and after 20, uh, 2010 until now. And now after 20 years from the change of the millennia from 2000 until 2022, we are now looking at the fifth industrial revolution because another generation is emerging, right? So 
the 21st century connection of innovation and inclusivity, and you might be able to connect this to a lot of, you know, uh, apocalyptic movies, um, but that could be true. Yeah, we don't know. But what's the reality now is how do you see this against your work as HR, right? So there's a lot of innovation that's happening. So think about innovations that is available for HR, right? You have online services, you have online 201, you have online attendance trackers, you have retirement fund available on your application on the phone, right? So these are the things that you, know, you can definitely take advantage of. So many of the organizations, not just here in the Philippines, but in the ASEAN region, you know, employ AI today. One third of it is using AI. So where is your company now, right? I know a lot of the companies, especially in the provinces, may not be as, as embracing because of, of course, because of uh, economics, because of finance, right? But it should not stop an HR practitioner to learn what it is, right? It's different to be not being able to afford it. It's different if you're ignorant about it. There, there are two different things, right? So even now, because of the pandemic, you know, uh, a lot of the jobs in the Philippines are now virtual assistants. And this has been actually ongoing for the last 12 years. It's just so happened that the Filipinos have discovered it during the pandemic, that there's actually jobs online that, it, that can be done at home, right? Actually, some of my coworkers before are doing this for the last decade. Right? But what's really important is how does industries evolve now, or at least in the next five years until 2027 or 2025 for that matter, right? This is a billion dollar industry, right? So artificial intelligence is, uh, is such a big you know, trend that's going to happen. It's going to be permanent, whether we like it or not. Maybe you have watched the, the Bicentennial Man uh, we're in, you know, uh, the person, the, the um, what you call that? Uh, that person, you know, lived for 200 years, right? So imagine whether we like it or not, it's going to be part of our daily lives in the next, I don't know, 100 years, right? So being an HR, what does it mean? It's not mean, it doesn't mean that you're, you need to be a fanatic of, of science fiction because it's not fiction. It's real. It's now. So what you need to know is to understand that the workforce of tomorrow, the people you will be working, I'm sure, you know, just surveying the, the people in this room who is right now uh, watching this and thank you for saying today here at HR Calabarzon and looking at the the topics we have today, you know, you'll be working in the next 30 years, right? With new people, you know, I can survey that the average age will be about 22 to 25 years old. Uh, that makes me younger. <laughs> but the jobs they're looking for are definitely in, uh, influenced by technology. And the workplaces that they want to be in is definitely you know, with cutting edge technology and even availability of working from home or a hybrid situation, uh, or even making their jobs easier by employing a lot of, you know, different types of platform that will make their, their, their menial jobs and their administrative tasks much more easier to manage. So just imagine what we should be looking at is that in the next every two years for every 1.5 year, you should take a new skill. It, it doesn't mean that uh, forget about the skill that you have before, but it means that you have to have a new skill every 1.5 years because, you know, maybe the, the information that you have or maybe the technology that you have a few years ago may no longer be available, right? It's no longer there. But that knowledge from previous will become now your fundamental, your foundation, your, your, your brick and mortar 
you know, foundation, like your physical office, when I say brick and mortar, physical office, right? For your knowledge, because now we don't have physical offices anymore. A lot of people are now working from home, right? I hope you get the pun. But nevertheless, right? The, job are, the jobs that we have now are pretty much diverse. The opportunities are now primarily, primarily on the platforms, online platforms. So upskilling yourself is also, um, there's no reason not to be upskilled because e-learning is available just like HR Calabarzon, 100 pesos, right? And you'll get two courses, imagine. So you just need very, very small investment for yourself but it is quantifiable. It's qualifying you for 10 times what you have worth at, at this time. So that's where you say that technology reshapes the way we think. You know, focus on your creativity. Focus on trying to deconstruct the things around you. You think that the, the, the picture on the screen is, is still science fiction, where in fact it is not. It's already available. It's actually on every phone that you have right now. This piece of glass or plastic or whatever it's called, uh, we call it an LED, we call it an LCD. This, is, this has been with us for many years. You know, I've been in, in Japan a few years ago and there's like a cabinet. It looks like a regular you know, glass cabinet, but when you, when you click something on the side, it becomes like a TV. Right. So this is not science fiction. This is real. This is now. This is available for us. So what is being mentioned a few years ago in the economic forum, uh, the World Economic Forum, is focused on the soft skills. What are the soft skills? Creativity. Right. Critical thinking. You know, for an HR, it is expected that you're able to look at root cause you're able to analyze data, you're able to bring new ideas from old ones, being able to rehash. And that's the, that's the third point here, it's co-creation. There are jobs that's going to be available in the next five years that is not yet existing today, right? If you remember 10 years ago, there are no, uh, maybe not 10, maybe 15 years ago, the jobs on data an analysts. You know, there's very, very few data analysts in the Philippines, right? But if you notice now, that's now like, you know, dime a dozen. There's a lot of people now focusing in, in the education, you know, in the college education to include data analytics as part of the curriculum, right? And even, you know, other, other types of science and technology courses that's not available in the past, like game development. You know, when we were kids, maybe 20 years ago, you know, when, when, when your parents, uh, when our parents, I mean, were, were skeptical on what are you trying to, you know, do, you know, focusing on playing games. But now, if you think, what's the, what, what course do you get in college or in uni? Uh, I'm on game development. Oh, wow, that's a multi, multi uh, hundred thousand job, right? If you're in the US, you know, uh, a game developer uh, gets around 80 to 100,000 US dollars a year, imagine. So that's, that's where we should go. So as an HR, the archaic systems, you know, the fundamentals are there. It's good that you know that, but also upskill yourself with other things that feels relevant as of this time. So part of the, the conversations that's been happening in the last couple of years is really to think and rethink the institution of work. Because the way that we have been doing jobs is always about the transactions. So it's not really about critical thinking. It's not really about, you know, so we need to rethink the institution of work. How is work now defined? Just in the last two years, because of the pandemic, it has changed the way we do things, right? I'm sure a lot of the HRs here, especially those who are the employee engagement, you know, you're, you cracked your head just to think of how you can introduce engagement activities during the time of the pandemic, right? During the lockdown. 
So almost all of the activities now we have been used to in the last two years is now online, right? Online uh, engagement activities, right? So these are the new stuff that we have to be creative about. So the collective intelligence is available, right? If it is not available in your company, then that's the reason why you need to be part of, example, HR Calabarzon or Philippine HR Group or ASEAN HR Leader Circle or PMAP or other PSTD. Um, uh, right? So you have to you you have to be part of a collective intelligence that is available for you to upgrade, upskill, and upscale your your understanding of how HR is being done right so innovation and the way that our quality of job is is quality of jobs is going to bring us to the next level so focus on upscaling and upscaling so you notice that soft skills are always going to be fundamental regardless of what revolution we are in you think that in the first industrial revolution they don't have creativity they don't know how to coach they don't have motivation. They they don't understand time management, right? Remember that you know Henry Gant uh, did that uh, in the 19, 1910s, right? In the change in the in the change of the of the century, right? Where we now use Gant charts for time management, right? And of course, you have your coaching and mentoring that has been there for quite a long years. So these are skill sets for any HR to really grab and to really put yourself through. Every penny that you put into investing yourself will have a hundred folds to what you can reap out of it. Your marketability is going to be exponentially higher than others. And, you know, the, the methodology even that you know should be outside of HR, right? Example, agile uh, organization. What is agility? What is agile in the first place? So a lot of organizations now are adapting to, to agility, right? It, in the 1980s, when it first introduced, it was used for computers and in the IT industry because the, the technology is so fast and the applications are so fast that you need to be really flexible and nimble and very fast to adapt. So the attitude now of agil agility and agile goes to three levels, ag agile culture, agile working, and agile workplace. So actually now it has been force fed to every HR because of the pandemic. So the attitude, the skills, and even the processes that are now we are using because of the pandemic, you know, has actually uh, also positively improved the way we do HR. Because remember, there are there are companies who are now reaching out to employees who are in the provinces. So it's now, it's no longer issue if your employee is somewhere else. But of course, it really depends on your on your nature of your business. If you're in the agriculture. Of course, you can't do online, <laughs> right? You can't plant a tree or you can't plant a rice online, right? But, but what it means is that you can do other stuff, right? You can do coaching even if you're located somewhere else. You can still provide services to your employees even if you're located somewhere else. So, so basically, the future of the workplace can now revolve into four sections, whether you're your your company is able to provide an emotional workplace, meaning in terms of well-being, remember during the pandemic again, I keep on harping about it, you know, the mental health, uh, your ability to, 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 to socially capitalize on your employees, you know, strengths, weaknesses, being able to engage together, even if they're just online. So these are now emotional aspects of the work. And of course, you have your physical workplace, if of course you're coming back to the office, you're more focused on making sure there's your safety, you're focusing on the ability for the company to provide, you know, roles and purposes that will be more, you know, uh, more meaningful to them. And of course, more acceptable by law, right? Because now, if you notice, DOLE, um, the, the labor law compliance officers are coming back. They're actually checking again the offices, physical offices. Uh, in Metro Manila and also other major cities. 
And of course, companies are working together to ensure that there are technological workplaces and purposeful companies, companies that stands for something like, you know, value system, they, they value on culture. And most of the time that helps out in the retention program uh, because it, it boils down to how the ideals of leadership is shared in the organization. So that's definitely a big plus for organizations. So HR should focus on getting more trainings, you know, bringing more trainings and, and ability for them to have a culture building program in, in, in your activities. I'm about to uh, finish my, my, my talk. Uh, you know, the future of work is available, whether we like it or not. It's going to be inevitable. And uh, it's, us, it's up to us uh, to ensure as HR, we understand how engagement empowers our employees and how alignment should be done from a digital skills perspective. This becomes now a culture. So from leadership up to HR and everybody in between should be understanding of how digital, you know, how technology and digitization should bring Filipinos to the global scale, if not in the ASEAN region, right? Because if the ASEAN integration happens by 2024 or 2025, you know, the legislation of, of employment will change. Even the way, you know, tariffs and trades, immigration is going to change. You know, it's just a matter of time when it's going to happen, whether it's going to be five years from now or 10 years from now, right? But it's always good to be prepared. And that's the reason why you also think of force, your workforce, your operational work, you know, how humans and, th uh, how humans and people uh, in the workplace are going to utilize technology to their advantage, right? Rather than trying to veer away and be afraid of technology, think about how technology can improve. Basically, you know, try to understand how it's going to bring you farther and farther ahead against the competition. That's why UX, user experience, is definitely something that you need to th think about. And there's programs, especially like in, in, in my uh, experience, you know, um, employee experience is very important. Net promoter score is very important. Is, are your employees able to say that, you know, they're really happy with where they are working? And will they be sharing the company to their friends, their loved ones, right? And, and introduce the company that they're working for, you know, as some, something that they're really a good ambassador for it, right? So the workplace is no longer now in a physical space. The work environment has also changed, right? So it's more now on connectivity. It's more now on the content. What types of collaborations do they have? What facilities that the company provide? You know, if they are working from home, do they have a laptop? Do they have an iPad? Do they have a, a mobile device? Do they have a, a, a tablet, etc. Right? Even internet, of course. Right? They won't be working without internet. So all of this stuff are now part of the future work. It's a matter of you as HR. How are you embracing it, and how are you preparing for it? That's basically the report that we have for the ASEAN region. And uh, hopefully the HRs out there here in the Philippines is, especially for those members uh, of the HR Calabar Zone, you know, think about it. How to prepare for the next generation, you know, in the next 10 years, next 20 years. The new generation is already upcoming and they're going to be part of the workforce, right? So they're going to be bringing new ideas. So it's better to be prepared. So that's the future of work. Thank you so much. That's uh, our ASEAN landscape. I hope you can also check out our Facebook page, ASEAN HR Leader Circle Philippines. And soon enough, we'll also have our international speakers on our page. Thanks so much, Ned and Jarina. Back to you. Okay, we are now open for Q&A. Kanina po nagtataas ng kamay. Si Sima, uh, ano ang name niya? Si Ma'am Jem, CC. Can you please um, unmute, Ma'am Jem? Uh, 
I'll be happy to uh, entertain questions. Okay. Ma'am Jorina, do you have any question para kay Sir Marvin? Na talaga namang ASEAN landscape ang ating topic ngayon, talagang the future of HR. Ay, sorry. May message po si Ma'am Jem na pindot lang daw po ang pag-aangat uh, ng kanyang hands. Okay lang, Ma'am? I thought meron lang po kayong question. Okay, good afternoon, Sir Marvin. Ngayon, Ang ganda talaga ng talk nyo kasi it's very, very relevant in this day and age, of course. Uh, as we all know, a lot of Filipinos, especially dito sa Philippines, medyo matagal yung pagka-catch up natin sa mga countries around us. Now, my question is, uh, do you have ways or do you have any ideas na pwede mag-catch Uh, na pwede ma-integrate yung AI, artificial intelligence, into a business or an organization? Do you have any ideas, any low-cost ideas that are free whatsoever? Yep, absolutely. Actually, there are there's a lot of Filipino businesses uh, that are available, actually. Um, I can think of one like Zalamea, right? They're using uh, they're using uh, retirement as a you know as part of the online services aside from the HRIS. Uh, there's also my friends from Sprout. Uh, you know this is for your for your uh, accounting and payroll services. Um, you know of course Job Street is uh, is not a Filipino company but uh, they are available here in the Philippines i mean those are low cost i would say there's so many other platforms that are available uh, i also have friends from savvy they used to be aplone and uh, they're providing uh, services to employees of different companies big companies actually are using them as a conduit for you know providing services for uh, loan loan services. Uh, Advance is also another company that is available online. So all you need to do is, you know, just go to their application page and, you know, you can actually do some loans aside from SSS or Pag-ibig. Um, so HR here in the Philippines is actually, it's just a matter of learning where it is available. It's curiosity about where it is. Trying to find out where to find it, where to find it, um, and and you can again like HR Calibrison is a very good platform, uh, online platform, social media platform, wherein you can be part of a, a group that shares knowledge, and and through those seminars and webinars that you are providing, actually the dissemination of information is faster. And now it becomes more relevant to have, you know, to, to be continuously part of HR Caliber Zone group, right? Because the different people that you, that you talk to, the members are there, they're free to share their information. So it's really also about caring. <laughs> you know, HR is, is always about caring, right? So we need to care and, and we need to share information towards our fellow HRs whether they're in the Calabazon area or in the Manila area or in whatever province they are from. So it's really about caring what HR can do here in the Philippines. Oh, tama yung sinabi ni Sir Marvin. Talaga namang is, HR is more caring and everything we could uh, see na in social media. We have also Philippine HR group. We have Asian uh, uh, group, di ba Sir Marvin? And we have HR Calaperson. By the way, Sir Marvin, Sir Ron Thomas told uh, chat this uh, afternoon, go Marvin, watching from Dubai. <laughs> diba? Talagang pati si Sir Ron Thomas is supporting Sir Marvin Soilo. A shout out to Sir Ron Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Siya yung ating speaker last week. Anyway, any question po sa ating parang mga kasamahan dito sa loob? Yes, uh, please raise your hand para makita namin if you have any more questions. Now, before uh, while waiting for another question to pop up, Sir 
Marvin, we have another question. Now, this question is, what are the top three skills, the top three technical skills we should train employees to be ready for the future of work? That is pretty interesting. And, and I think that's a very good question as well because focusing on many things could also dilute how we are we are trying to help our employees i would rather focus on two areas whether it is an hr employee and the general general uh, employee population of employees um, for hr i think it's important that you understand the three major areas uh, of of your business maybe from a recruitment perspective there's a lot of artificial intelligence. There's a lot of online services available for recruitment. So improving your candidate experience definitely will help out in your retention. There's a lot of other um, research and surveys and even studies that, you know, if you want employees to have a great uh, experience, start with the recruitment area. Because if you have employees that doesn't have a great experience at the outset, at the beginning, example, wait, making them wait for five hours, right? Without food, not giving them anything, right? Who would any employee would like to be employed there? I'm sure they're just desperate. That's the reason why they are waiting. But does it tell that you have a great, you know, uh, are you taking care of your employees as well? It's not. So recruitment areas is a, is a pretty good start where you can introduce uh, technology, right? Um, the second one definitely is training. You know, there's a lot of e-learning courses. Now more than ever, I, I'm not, of course, advocating YouTube, but you know, there's a lot of information out there. Like you have TED Talks, you have even Harvard Online, which is actually free. You haven't even checked that out. You know, Harvard, uh, uh, Harvard University, of course, in the U.S., right? They have an online course or short courses, like five-minute videos, in their Har in the Harvard uh, website, and it's pretty much free. So imagine the the quality of being educated remotely. Right in the Philippines, without leaving, you needing to leave the Philippines, you are able to learn a lot from their website. So capitalize on doing a a hybrid type of learning. So you can do online training. You can also have facilitator led. You can also have like this one, an online webinar. You know, there's a never ending way of how to improve your 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 training services to your employees. And also, I think it's important that you know you have an, an e-learning tool because you can also track easier. You can track easier who which employees have done their training, uh, what part of training have they been you know completing, and at the same time, uh, you can create a curriculum uh, for your employees so that they can see the progress as they go along their careers in your organization. Last but not the least, definitely is about you know your your employee engagement, right? When we say employee engagement, it does not mean inuman. It does not mean going to the beach and swimming. Employee engagement means that there are services from HR. Example, like your your uh, you should have like a a canteen type menu type. If I if I if I may say, you know, wherein people can just go there. And then there's like FAQs that, that people can read or maybe some videos or question and answer videos that is already av available, like how to prepare their maternity leave, right? This, you don't need the person to be there, but of course it's good that if there's a person to be available, but I'm sure organizations will always have employees who get to have maternity who will be hospitalized, who needs pag-ibig loan, who will have questions on phil health, who will have family members who unfortunately pass away and they will need bereavement uh, help from their employee, uh, from their employers, right? So this employee engagement is not limited to just the fun stuff. 
it's also about how you take care of your employees. And most of the time, a lot of HR are not coached, not prepared, and they're not equipped to answer correctly certain aspects of, of employees' concerns, grievances, problems. We should really have, I'm, I'm sure you can raise your hand. Does your company provide training? Really, hours of training to train you on how to answer grievances of employees. How about answering employees who are angry? Employees who are wanting to leave the company because of certain issues that they have with leadership. Do you have an FGD group that you do? I doubt that 50% of the people in this room have a focused learning curriculum specific for HR competency. I doubt it. So things happen for a reason. This reason you are here today to be able to hear what I have to say. Start thinking of that. If your company is not investing on your skills as HR, then what more can you expect from your company? Right? Because they think you're just, you know, you're, you're a wallflower there. You're just a, a, a you know, a part of the uh, decoration. <laughs> you should be a business partner. So, you know, the new technology, uh, the new technology, the new uh, idea and principle of HR is business partnership. Business partnership. Dave Aldrich has a book on it, you know, being HR champions, right? It's, it's really about HR being a business partner. We're not a transactional group. We should be able to give good insights to our leaders, being able to provide you know, ideas, and even decision-making points so that they will have, as owners of the business, have an informed decision. I think that's the focus that we can do from a, from a, from a you know, technology point of view. I hope I, it answers the question. <laughs> wow, thank you, Sir Marvin. That was very jam-packed with a lot of valuable information. And of course, just to mention our participant, Ma'am Jem, thank you for sharing your, your knowledge, Sir, Sir Marvin. It is really important to upskill as technology upgrades as well. I love attending HR Calabarzon and other weekend HR trainings and seminars. To know what's the latest about HR, processes, global and local demands. Thank you, HR Calabarzon. Eh, nakamute ka, Ma'am ma Neds. Sorry. Umiyok ako tapos ano, nakamute pala ako. <laughs> thank you. Thank you then, Ma'am Jem. Yan. I think um, medyo malinaw naman sa kamaliwanag talaga yung uh, pagpapaliwanag ni Sir Marvin. Uh, kaya wala silang masyadong question for the day. Okay. Share lang ako ng screen. Ma'am Jorina. Of course, HR Calabarzon Group presents this Certificate of Appreciation to Sir Marvin Zoilo, CHRP and CPHR, for sharing his invaluable knowledge and expertise as a resource speaker for the 68th HRE Knowledge entitled The Future of HR AI in the ASEAN Landscape via Zoom and Facebook Live at 1 o'clock to 2.30 p.m. given the 17th day of September, signed by the founder, Ma'am Nedi, and the co-founder, Jarina Caparal. Thank you so much, Sir Marvin. Napakarami na talaga naming natutunan at handang hand sure na sure kami na marami tayong nahanda ng mga ka-HR para sa future of AI. HR. Yes. Tama ba, Mami Neds? Yes, ma yes na. Nasa na ba yun? Kamit ba? <laughs> yes, uh, Ma'am Zorina, Sir Marvin, nadagdagan ang aming knowledge at talagang masasabi natin this past few weeks talagang naihahanda natin ang ating mga ka-HR sa ating uh, 
group sa ating Calabarzon, Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Rizal, and Quezon, kasama ang ating mga kasamaan sa NCR, North Mindanao, uh, South Mindanao, uh, South Luzon, South, uh, North uh, Luzon, Visayas, pati ang ating mga ka-HR nasa sa ibang bansa. Na-excite ako dahil palapit na palapit na tayo sa ating pinakalast na HR e-knowledge back-to-back at natutuwa po kami na nakasama namin si Sir Marvin for another learnings na talaga namang parang ano eh, parang ano lang kay Sir Darwin eh, parang sisiw lang sa kanya the way he could um explain uh, yung kanyang talk this afternoon dahil talagang tumatagos naman sa ating mga ka-HR na pwede na. Uh, talagang artificial intelligence is matagal ng ginagamit ng isang HR. Tama ba, Ma'am Jorina? Yes, matagal na matagal na. I think since 2000s ba. And of course, ever-changing po ang ating technology and that's why ever-changing ang future of work. That's why lagi po tayo manood sa HR Calabarzon to learn more and be updated as always. And of course, please do like uh, like or join ASEAN. Sir Marvin, tama ba yung ating group? ASEAN, uh, nasa Facebook group din po siya. At to, to contact Sir Marvin, you could like or uh, invite Sir Marvin sa kanyang LinkedIn at saka Facebook. Yes, absolutely, Neds and Jorina. Thank you again for inviting me. And of course, I would like to uh, also thank for everybody who has attended today. And I hope may nakuha tayong kahit konti na learnings. And uh, again, the Facebook page for the ASEAN HR Leaders Circle Philippines. You can go there. You can also find me in, in LinkedIn and my Facebook page as well. And uh, I'm always uh, quite privileged and humbled by the invitation of the HR Calabarzon group. And of course, with Ned and Jorina and the rest of the group. So thanks so much. And I hope uh, I can be invited again. <laughs> thank Siyempre, you so much. Sir. Talagang lagi ka namin makakasama. Yes. Marami ka, sir, na, na nakikita o nakukuhang knowledge. Even, di ba, nung nag-Singapore tayo, sir, alam ko may mga na-import ka from the speaker mentor natin from the Singapore. Here, kasi yung may mga nabanggit ka, sir, na nanarinig ko na rin dun sa, sa ano natin. Kaya itong kagandahan na ang mga kasamahan mong HR, speaker and mentor, ay nakakasama mo rin sa mga learnings with, syempre, doon sa mga kilala na talaga at talaga namang pinagpipitaga na nating mentor sa human resource. Muli Sir Marvin, maraming salamat sa pagpapaunlak sa amin na makasama ka sa aming second HR e-knowledge anniversary. Magkita po tayo ulit mga ka-HR. Meron pa tayong back-to-back -back with Ma'am Rona, Dale Florentino. Stay tuned! Para, Ma'am Jorina, para po sa gustong kumuha ng ating e-certificate, Yes, para po sa ating gustong kumuha ng e-certificate, pakiscan lang ang QR code or pakiscreenshot. Ito pong ating attendance link. Dito nyo po ilalagay ang inyong first name and last name para makakuha ng e-certificate. And dito nyo rin po i-upload ang inyong proof of payment. Yan. So, if a flash lang po naman yung screen habang pinaprepare po naman yung susunod natin na Speaker. And syempre, before that, Ma'am Neds, meron ata tayong kailangan gawin. Yung mandatory picture taking natin, di ba? Ay yes, Ma'am. Nakalimutan ko. Sorry. <laughs> yung ating mandatory picture taking. Okay, so pa-video on naman po ng lahat ng mga magaganda at pogi. Yan. Okay, so first slide, smile. And so second slide. Third slide. Okay. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry, nakalimutan ko yung picture taking. Um, tinawagan ko kasing ating very, very special second 
speaker this afternoon. Sir Marvin, nandito na po si Ma'am Rona. Hi Ma'am Rona, where are you? Para magkita lang sila. Ayun. Ito ang aking idol. Maliw. <laughs> Kami ka Marvin. O, hindi tayo nakita na sa Singapore. Hindi tayo masyado nakapag-banding. O nga, medyo busy. Iba-iba yung dates ng ano natin. Oh. Activities. <laughs> Hinahanap po si Ma'am Rona. Ayan, si Ma'am Rona. Ay, dito na po ako. Pasensya na ako. Nakatapos ko lang ng webinar. Ayan. So guys, I think mag-start na tayo.